welcome to Tom Fashion Empire sewing page. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to cut a shirt dress. So I have my Ankara fabric. I'm going to be making use of this Ankara fabric and I'm going to be mixing it with black, plain black fabric. So now I have my fabric, um, which is two and a half yards. It's actually two trousers, but that's equivalent to two and a half yards. So now, and I've gotten all my measurements ready. I'm going to be making use of the back, the bust, the armpit, the slim waist, the hip measurement, the half length, and the gown length. And also, I'm going to be making use of my neck circumference because it's going to be a shirt dress, like I said. So now, the next thing we are going to be doing is to place your fabric on foot like I have here. So once we are done with that, now there's something I always do before cutting my fabric. I always work with the widest part of the body, divide it by four and add the necessary allowance so that I won't waste my fabric. So it always enables me to manage my fabric. Now, the hip I'm working with is hip 45. So if I should divide it by four, I'm having 11, three quarter or thereabouts. So I can just go ahead and add, let's say two to three inches to it so that, because I'm making it a A line at the end. So I can just go ahead and place it directly so this is 16 and because this is a shed so we are still going to need few openings at the center front so i'm just going to go ahead and use 17 and a half which is okay so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to determine the length of my gown so because this is Ankara, which is 45 inches, and I don't want it to be too long, it's a short one. So I'm going to be working with length 41 and use one inch as my bending allowance. So this is my 41 here. So right here is my 41 plus the extra one inch as bending allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and measure from this other side as well. That's a total of 42, and I'll connect it on a straight line. And once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead. So now this is my M, and this is the upper part. So I'm going to start placing all my measurements at this point. Now, the back measurement. My back is 15. Now, before I do that, you know it's a shirt, so we need to do some things here. Now, we talk about for shirts, we always have something we call the button O and the um, facing. So, before I do anything, I'm going to measure my one inch and one and a half all the way. This one and a half here. So this one and half is going to serve as the facing, while the other one which is going to serve as the button. Oh, it is the one that is going to be holding the button. So this one is the one that is going to serve as the facing. That's the lining part. So once I'm done with that now, the next thing I'm going to do now is to go ahead and measure the one inch again. That's from this line where we have the one so I'm going to measure my one inch all the way down. So you can go ahead and label it facing or interfacing interfacing and this one button pole so now this is 1.5 this is one inch don't forget that now the next thing i'm going to do now is from this line now so i'm going to go ahead and measure my back measurements my back is seven and a half i mean 15 rather divided by two i'm going to have seven and a half so i'm going to add half 
you can either add half or one inch because it's a shirt. So a shirt is not necessary. Look at what I have on here. You see that the um, seam that's joining the sleeve to the um, main fabric is starting at this point and still it looks nice on me. So it's also the same thing when making a shirt. It's not necessary that it must come up here like when you are making a fitted blouse because a shirt is meant to be a little bit loose garment. So you can add either half or you do one inch. So things that also determine is how you are going to join your sleeve to your main body. So now I'm working with nine inches directly. And from that point, I'm going to simply come down by one inch so that I can have an accurate shoulder slant. And from this point now, I'll measure two and half, not three, because this is a shirt. So I measure two and half from this point, and I'm going to connect it like so. So once we are done with the shoulder slant, the next thing we are going to do is to place our armhole measurement. That's the armpit divided by two. So my armpit is eight, and I'm going to maintain that eight inches. I'm not going to add to it because this is a shirt, so we are still going to do some um, extension for the back. So I'm going to place it like this, connecting it on a straight line. So this straight line helps in shaping the armhole. So once I'm done, I'm going to bring my ruler and have another straight line here so as well. So once I'm done now, the next thing is to start placing my measurement here. So my bust measurement is 39. And 39 divided by 4, I have 93 quarter. So I'm going to place my 93 quarter here. So if you like, you can use 1 to 2 inches as you see my allowance. But I'm doing 1 and half, which is enough. So now... From there, the next thing I'm going to do is to note my um, shoulder to my half length, so which is 16. So this is my 16 here. So at that point where I have my 16, I'm going to go ahead and measure my, my slim waist measurement or your eye waist measurement, any more you call it, divided by 4. So mine is 32 divided by 4 is 8. So I'm going to place the 8 here. Now... I'm going to add the same 1.5 that we added at the bus to it because it does, it's not going to have any that. So from that point, I'm going to come down by 8 inches, which is my hip point. Here I'm going to be placing my hip measurement. Now, my hip is 45. So 45 divided by 4. I'm having around um, 11. I think that's um, 44 is 11. So that's 1 divided by 4. I'm having 11 more quarter. So I'm going to place my 11 one quarter, then plus one and a half. So now that is that. Now on the M, coming to the M now, because I want it to be a line. If you want yours to be straight, you can just bring what you have on your hip down to this place. If you want it to be penciled, whatever you have on your hip, you can subtract 1.5 to 2 inches. You can even subtract more if you are using a stretchy fabric. But my, I want it to be a line. So, and when you are making a short a line gown, you don't use as much ease like you would do when it's a long gown because this one is short. So, whatever I have on my hip line, which is um twelve three quarter, so I'm simply going to bring it here and add extra two inches to it. So, which is going to be fourteen three quarter. So, this is what I have here. This is it. So I'm going to go ahead now, connect it. So now you can also decide if you want your A-line to start from the waist. So if you want it to start from the waist, you can go ahead and connect it all the way. If I want it to start from my waist, I'll just connect it all the way. But mind you, if you want it to start from the waist, you have to consider the hip measurement. Look at, if I want this to start from the waist and I bring it this way, all the way, that means... I'm taking the exact hip measurement. So in that case, I might have used more seam allowance at my waistline here. Are you getting it? That means that this waistline here, instead of using 1.5, I would have used something up to 2 or 2 and a half. So because if I shouldn't, if I should just bring it here like so, this is the accurate hip point here. So I'm going to call it, cut it off. And by the time I seal together, it is going to affect the ease that is meant to be around my hip measurement. So... But for me, I don't want it to be like that. So 
I'm just going to connect this to this and bring this to this. So there is room for blending. You can go ahead and blend your waist to it perfectly so you have an accurate measurement. So that is that. So if you look at it now, you see that the A line there is not that obvious. It's just minimal. So once we are done with that, the next thing now is for us to simply come here and shape the arm O. Now, to shape the arm O, I'm going to get the midpoint of my armpit, which is four inches. So from that four inches point, I'm going to come in by half. And from here, I'll from this angle here, I'll go out by one. So now this one is not the same thing for everybody. There are some people that you have to use half. There are some that you use 1.5. It depends on the body sizes and the distance from here to the bust measurement. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this to this and bring this now to this point, which is like this. And bring this back here, which is like this. So if you have your French cuff, you can just go ahead and uh, use it and omit yourself of all these um, um, calculations. So once we are done with that, the next thing we have to work with is the neck shaping. Now, like I said, this is a shirt, not um, a blouse or just any um, outfit. It's a shirt and there's a, um, a, let me say, a standard of how the shirt should be around the neckline when when you are in most especially when you are fixing a collar if it's a shared dress without collar now fine you could do anything for your neck so now my next circumference is 15 so you can go ahead and divide it by six and whatever you have is going to be your neck width 15 by 6 i add 2.5 so that means from this line now that's from here i'm going to be measuring the 2.5 so, and luckily it was even that point that we did uh, our shoulder slant. So this is it. Now, for the shaping of my neck now, because this is a shirt, so I'm going to simply come to this line here and come down by three inches. Three. Note that the 2.5 started from this line. That's the line, the bottom O line, which also serves as the center front. So I started from this line and measure my 2.5. Now, for the neck depth now, I started from the edge that's from the beginning of my fabric and i measured my three inches so now i'm simply going to shape it you can also come here measure the three inches to serve as a guideline so i'm simply going to connect it from here to here now when measuring when shaping the neck of a shirt i want you to play pay i mean pay close attention to this place now it isn't a round neck you can shape it like that it's like an arc so it has to follow the shape of that arc like something like this it's not a round neck, which I have to come like this. No. If I should do something like this, it is going to make the um, neck to be too wide. So it's like an arc, which I just have to go slow and steady and close it up here. So now the next thing I'm going to do when cutting is to bring this over. Because remember, we said this place is the interface, meaning by the time we are through, when we want to see, we are going to bring this over to this one. So we have to bring it underneath it. So that the cutting here can match up and it will work perfectly as an interfacing for the bottom O area. So I'm going to match it up like this and cut off my neck and all the way. So I hope you understand. Also, the M, I didn't do any shaping for the M. It has no shaping. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cut it out. So remember I said it's an arc. It's an arc. Not um, a round neck or whatever. It's an arc. So once you are done, you go ahead, cut off the shoulder, and go ahead to the body. So then to go ahead and keep cutting. So it's an A line. That's why you see that it's kind of coming out at this point here. So once I'm done. I'm going to come here as well and cut it up. So if you want yours to have any shaping at the end area, you can go ahead and shape it. But me, I don't want any shaping. So this is what I have. Now I can go ahead and open this place, but I'm not going to do that yet. I want to use it to cut the back. So now for the back, if you want your back to have something like a pleat 
fine. You can go ahead and use the same way. But mind you, you are still going to shape, change some things around the neck area. But if you don't want your back to have anything, just do something like this. Bring this over. Then you can use your office pin to hold it down so that it doesn't interrupt when you are working with the front. I mean, the back, rather. So I'm going to pin it down like so, so that it won't interrupt. So I'm going to go ahead and pin these two down. So there is no rushing, just go slow and steady. Don't rush yourself. So I've done so, I've pinned it down. So now, this is what I have now, which is what I'm going to be placing at the, for the front and I'll be using it as a guideline to cut my front. So I'm going to place it aside. Before I do that, I'm going to measure the widest part, which is at the end, to know why I have there. So I have um, 15 inches. So I'm going to place it aside and place my fabric in fact whether you are whatever you are doing the fabric for the back must always be unfolded anyway so i'm going to now another thing you have to be mindful of is the um pattern of your fabric there are some pattern that you can't just place it anyhow because of the um design on it but if yours has no particular design if you can place it anyhow if you look at this now this and this is the same thing so anyhow i place it it's still going to work so now I'm going to use this as the M now for the back so that I'll still have enough for my sleeve. So for this now, this is 18, which is more than what I need. So I'm going to adjust it and then. So now this is the front. I've placed it on my back measurement this is the i mean this is the back now <laughs> sorry this is the front and this is the fabric which i'm going to be using for the back so i've placed the front on the back piece now at the m the m measurement that's the length at the m is still going to be the same thing here you can see i've placed it having it on each other perfectly now it is at the shoulder line that there's going to be a difference you will notice that when you look at shirt it's always like the shoulder seam is go coming to the front like this now if you want yours if you um if you don't want to do this you can just omit this place cut your place your when you pin it down cut your back piece the same way you cut your shirt piece aside you have to change the neck but if you want to know the ready-made way they feel they make a shirt, then you have to follow this one. Now, you can just easily from this shoulder line here. Remember, we came down by one inch at the armhole area. So you can just go up here by two. And you go up here by three because of the one inch cutout that we already have here. So you go up by three. So and once you do that, I'm going to cut this off so that you can see this properly now so here i went up by three because there had been and cut out of um one inch here so i have to cover it up so that's why i'm doing three so and mind you it is still going to be a straight line so i'm going to connect my straight line here like so so now the next thing i'm going to do is the um shoulder or the back measurement i use for the front is the same thing i'm going to be using for my back so i'm simply going to measure which is nine so i'm going to bring my nine inches here as well so now from that point now the next thing i'm going to do is to also come down by one inch by one inch so this is my one inch and come in here by two and a half like we did for the front and have my shoulder slant so this is my shoulder slant here so once I'm done with that, the next thing I'm going to do is to shape the neck like we did. Remember, we used the same two and a half for the front. So I'm still going to maintain that same two and a half. Then now, for the back, 
the neck width is going to be one inches one inch rather one inch just one inch so i'm going to come down by one inch and shape it like an app it's an app so so i'm going to shape it like so so once i'm done now that is it for the back i'm just going to connect the measurements making sure that now you know that this one is not the back is not meant to come in as much as the the front so i'm just going to go ahead and connect it this way so that's that for the back no that nothing nothing no shaping at the end everything still remains the same at the end the longer length is going to take place at the shoulder area that is where the extra length is going to take place and you are good to go so i can now go ahead and um, cut it out now so this is what we have now that by the time you bring this over to this you are going to have the same thing you can see what i'm having now by the time i bring the two over to each other can you see so now that is that now let me see something here whenever yeah you notice that i went down i made my neck depth one inch not 1.5 you can use up to 1.5 but when making a shirt in order not to have the neck that is going to be too wide it's better you start little so if anything happens, you can. When you also have to increase, maybe by the time I'm through with this shirt now, if anything happens, like the neck becomes tight, are you getting it? I can reshape it, but when reshaping it, you don't even go to up to. I can't come down up to half or by the wideness up to half at a time. I can do one quarter, then reshape it and calculate everything, making sure that is it enough for the accurate neck circumference are you getting it so when making a shirt i always advise people that it is even better if the neck is tight are you getting it? then you can okay reshape it and you work with your accurate measurement so you always have to have your neck circumference so that you have something guiding you that will serve as as a guideline because if you make a shirt with wide neck there is nothing you can do about it again so you just have to maintain it like that there is no uh now for the shirt the next thing we have to cut is the yoke of our shirt the yoke is always that fabric that stops halfway at the back piece now this is the back piece i've placed it on fold like so so now the fabric is just short it doesn't need to get to the armhole area it can stop like let's say around quarter from the shoulder to the armpit or at most you can make it up so i'm just going to be managing the little that i have here so I'm going to bring it like this, making sure that it is just enough to shape my neck. Then before I go ahead and um, have my straight line or if I'm having a V line at the M of the yoke. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out like so. So this is it. I'm going to go ahead. Now, once I'm done with that, I need to have a straight line here so you can have a straight line and you can have something like a v anything that you just want so there is no limit there is no um let me say there is no um right way or wrong way to doing this it just depends on what you as a designer want so just do you for me i prefer to always work with a straight line so i'm just going to go ahead and have my straight line here so i'm going to cut it so now that is that for the yoke of my shirt the front doesn't need a yoke aside if you want to like let's say create another design mix the colors then fine but it's only the bag that often use the yoke and we are going to see what we use the yoke to do so that is that